They will start with the asylum seekers and the trauma related to that. Okay, now certainly the trauma that occurs with asylum seekers is what we what you usually call a triple trauma because we need to remember the country of origin where they come from. And there's a reason why people just pack the bags and leave. It just, you know, it doesn't happen by choice. It's usually a, a forced or a fear factor that makes them leave. And it's, it's usually the, the war-torn type of countries that they tend to leave from. So that in itself has its own trauma. That in itself, it creates its own factors of PTSD. Then it's the journey coming over, and we certainly frequently see in the news too the, the horrific conditions and the situations people come as in coming over, specifically the boats and certainly the, the tsunami of refugees to the European countries and the and multiples of drownings that has actually occurred as they're going by sea too there. Um, and we've had people too coming in by boats, but not the same number as they've had to the European countries of late. But that in itself is, the conditions of that, again, is traumatic. So it's already a second layer of trauma that's actually coming on them. And then, of course, it's the arrival. So when they do arrive, it's the process they're going through, especially if they still need to be processed to get the actual refugee status. Because asylum seekers are people fleeing, seeking the refugee status. So it's the people that we see a lot of in the detention centres that's usually in the highlight. But it's, it's a cluster of folks being very traumatised, then being moved into a camp which confines their movements as well. So they feel feared in their country, but now they come looking for freedom, feeling that they actually become imprisoned and being processed. I heard a speak at a conference uh, I was at recently, uh, a nurse who works at Nauru, and um, she there deals with people waiting to be processed. And of course, the detention centre, there really are detention centres, you know, everything is plastic and you know, everything's counted and it's, it's just like being in a jail, really, for all intents and purposes. But she um, speaks with them and she has a few that is allowed or trusted enough to visit her at her office. But she has it just set up homely just with the nicety of things allowed them to sit. And she said she can see just the change in their demeanour when they come in and just sit down and have a cup of tea with her. And she has cup and saucer and, you know, and has a little biscuit. It's the old-fashioned way you set up a morning tea. Um, but for them, it's, it's quite a significant impact. And it's just seeing them, that they just sort of melt um, but also become quite teary. And it's just a little glimpse of creating that personhood back, that humanisation back, because it's been stripped away from them, even in there. It's been stripped away prior, well and truly prior to their arrival. So, you know, they come in with absolutely nothing. Uh, and all they want is to be free and do their own thing. And it just makes it very hard um, to process things through. So by her giving that sense of normality back the best way she can, she noticed that is a significant improvement in itself and not even really talking about the trauma. She lets them lead that direction. She just talks about whatever else the conversation might be, but she allows them to lead the conversation and works it through there and has found significant improvement in a few of them like that. So I think it's good that we just keep the basics rather than get too caught up in the technical side of things, that we just simply keep things basic as they are.